Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Heart Health Talk tonight in honor of American Heart Month. You know, February was first designated as American Heart Health Month way back in 1964. But the reality is, while it's American Heart Month here in the United States, it's important to note that cardiovascular disease knows no borders. Cardiovascular disease, including heart disease and stroke, remains the leading global cause of death with more than 17 million deaths each year. Because where we find people who need improvements in their nutrition and living a healthy lifestyle, we will find people with heart disease. My name is Casey Schloss, doctor of pharmacy. I'm a wife and a mom to two little ones. My passion is helping families get healthier through a more holistic approach. A few years ago, I became passionate about prevention and as a result, passionate about nutrition and the way food works in our bodies to protect and repair the damage that's happening every day. And this is damage that's happening as a result of everyday living, unhealthy foods, oxidative stress, and more. And so it is a natural process but the good news is there's something we can do about it. So much of it comes back to what are we eating that's causing damage and what aren't we eating that could protect us? And this led me to more of a functional pharmacy approach to health. You can say it another way. I like to focus on helping people identify and put out the flame rather than focusing on treating the smoke. One of the most impactful things I've learned is that it's overwhelmingly common for us to be lacking in our diets with regard to the foods that protect us and promote healing naturally. You know, the human heart is a fascinating organ. You can actually think of it as a well-coordinated machine. The heart has its own electrical supply and it pumps blood through tens of thousands of miles of blood vessels to deliver oxygen and help remove waste. It's truly amazing. And while it is fascinating, it can also be you and your family's greatest health threat. Heart disease is the leading cause of death, and studies suggest that by age 10, children raised on the standard American diet already have fatty streaks in their arteries. That's the first sign of atherosclerosis. Currently in the United States, by the time a person graduates high school, they can ha already have the foundation for heart disease. Considering this, you can see why it's not uncommon to see clinical cardiac events of the heart attack and stroke in people in their 40s, and sometimes even in patients in their 20s. These changes in the vasculature are appearing years and maybe even decades before heart disease is diagnosed, before our symptoms are even present. And I think it's because there's no immediate association right after we eat. You know, there's no immediate association after an unhealthy food to the damage that it's causing. And the fact that it can take decades to clinically present with symptoms, I think it can be tough to wrap our minds around it before it's too late. So my goal tonight is to help educate and empower each of us to become as heart healthy as possible. And we won't be able to do that with another medication, a procedure or an operation. We'll do it by changing our biochemistry. And how will we do that? by focusing on the plant protective foods we need to be eating daily. And this tells us that primary prevention early on is where we need to focus. And to focus on primary prevention, we need to start even our kids on a healthier intake of real whole foods early on. Because the encouraging part of all of this is that we can do something about it. So the question isn't, you know, can we prevent damage? The question is, do we want to focus on reversing it? I have yet to meet one person who's unaffected by heart disease, whether it be themselves, a loved one, or a friend. And I'd be willing to guess that virtually every person listening tonight, or maybe you're catching the replay, has been affected by heart disease in one way or another. It's definitely affected my family. And that is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about sharing this information with you tonight. So let's jump into a more detailed look at how the food we eat affects our heart health. Dr. Esselstyn of the Cleveland Clinic uses decades of research to back up his claim that heart disease is actually a foodborne illness and poor nutrition is the cause. And we have to look at this from a 10,000 foot view tonight for the sake of time, but it is fascinating stuff. And when we understand the why behind it, then we can be empowered to make lasting change. So much of it comes down to something called the endothelium. And while it is just one cell layer thick, the endothelium lines the approximately 50 to 60,000 miles 
miles of arteries and veins that course through our bodies. But why is the endothelium important with regard to heart health and nutrition? We're going to dive right in and uh, take a look at this. So once thought to just be this wallpaper between the blood and the wall of our arteries, the endothelium really is now to be understood as the key to living a long and healthy life. The cells are thin and yet they're very active. They make hormones, they permit the passage of messaging chemicals, um, and they help maintain proper blood vessel function. One of the key molecules made by our endothelium is nitric oxide. You may have heard of it. And one of the surest signs of health is generous nitric oxide production. And the converse is actually true of many diseases, including diabetes. So what is it that harms our endothelium? All the classic risk factors of early heart and artery damage, you know, that you can think of like smoking, um, elevated blood sugar, like we see in prediabetes and diabetes, things like obesity, high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, especially the oxidized LDL or the bad cholesterol that you're probably familiar with. These can all damage our endothelium. But here's where our nutrition comes in. Foods such as, you know, processed meals that are high in fat also quickly damage our endothelium. So endothelial dysfunction is a term that refers to the impaired functioning of the lining of our blood vessels and is characterized by what you see on this on the slide here. So you see things like impaired vasodilation, uh, the deficiency of that nitric oxide, and then what, what they call an activated endothelium that is really in a state of inflammation, not a good thing, growth, thrombosis, or blood clotting. So this endothelial dysfunction precedes atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis and it is an independent predictor of future cardiovascular events. But how can we boost our endothelial function? It's a good question to ask ourselves because we all want healthy endothelium for wellness, right? Longevity, optimal fitness, um, and then of course, heart attack and stroke prevention. So maintaining a healthy weight, uh, avoiding smoking, and practicing these healthy eating habits are the keys to this healthy endothelium. Certain foods can actually boost the production of the nitric oxide and reverse the endothelial dysfunction to power our health. Most notably, we're talking fruits and vegetables. So exactly the things that your parents and grandparents told you to be eating. And this is why, again, the why can really empower us. So this vascular endothelium, it's a major target for what they call oxidative stress. Therefore, nutrients and dietary factors with antioxidant properties, in particular vitamin C, we all know vitamin C, right? They protect our vascular endothelium from damage that's caused by the oxidative stress that we're talking about here. Also vitamin C and certain what are called flavonoids, and we're going to talk more about those later, may increase the availability of the nitric oxide. Good thing, right? So in a nutshell, with this endothelial dysfunction, we have what's called oxidative inflammation, not good. So we need antioxidants and these antioxidants from food rescue us from the oxidative stress because of the compounds that help defend ourselves from the damage damage that's caused by the free radicals from the oxidative stress. But no, I don't want you to go down and buy pills that say antioxidants. I want you to get it from food and what kind of food? food that's high in ORAC value, which is the oxygen radical absorptive capacity. So again, we're talking fruits and vegetables, the colorful foods that are packed with the important nutrients that are essential to our heart health. They're known for being rich in these antioxidants like anthocyanin that protect us against oxidative stress and inflammation because food and food alone can and will make a radical change in our heart health. Isn't that exciting? So let's take a look at an amazing meta-analysis, um, which is a review, a huge review of, a, of studies. Um, and this is from the critical reviews in food and science, food science and nutrition from May 2017, where they looked at nearly one and a half million participants. So again, huge. And here is the words that came directly from this meta-analysis. Our records indicate that increased fruit and vegetable intake is inversely associated with the risk of cardiovascular disease. 
This meta-analysis provides strong support for the current recommendations to consume a high amount of fruits and vegetables to reduce cardiovascular risk. Amazing stuff, right? So you see that inverse relationship. The more fruits and vegetables we eat, the lower our risk of cardiovascular disease, proven by this massive meta-analysis. Dr. Esselstein said something that I love about eating a heart healthy diet. He said, there's no more mortality from the healthy diet, no morbidity. The benefits improve with time and there's no problem because you have to eat anyway. And I love that. It really simplifies our way of looking at a healthy, a healthy diet. It makes a lot of sense, right? Um, but what about when you can't or won't eat the recommended amount of fruits and vegetables every day? What do you do then? I know this was a big problem for myself and my family, and that's why I'm so grateful we found Juice Plus. It's designed to bridge the gap in our diet. So Juice Plus is made from juice powder concentrates and oils from more than 40 different fruits, vegetables, berries, and grains. That's a lot. I love the variety. And it's not a substitute for eating fruits and vegetables. They actually just support a healthy diet by offering a much wider variety of the naturally occurring vitamins, along with those antioxidants and phytonutrients that we talked about earlier that are found naturally in these fruits and vegetables. So every Juice Plus product is made from quality ingredients. And I think you're gonna love to hear that they're grown farm fresh, providing the nutrients that our bodies need. Each one contains a range of nutritionally dense whole foods. So we're talking about the goodness that comes from, you know, the freshness of an orange, the juiciness of blackberries. I hope you can picture this, the ripeness of a red tomato. And just think about that all shrunk down in con into convenient on the go solutions. So I, I also want to point out that Juice Plus is not about treating or curing specific diseases or conditions. It's simply healthful plant-based nutrition. Very simple. It's highly concentrated to deliver that nutritional punch, which is what we need. But my favorite part from both a pharmacist and a mom's perspective is that it's supported by over 20 years. Yes, you heard me right. 20 years of independent clinical research. So um, as with anything, every person's experience varies, of course, because all of our bodies are different and we're all at a different place on, you know, um, the health spectrum. But here's how I look at it. Just imagine what could happen when you give your body all of these healthful, nourishing plant foods, the phytonutrients, the anti oxidants, the macro and micronutrients, and then there's the clinical research to back it all up because food is information. Just like we talked about earlier, the amazing things that fruits and vegetables can do to protect our bodies and our heart. Food's not just calories. Sometimes we get caught up in looking at it that way, but it's not, it truly is information, but we have to be putting the right information into our bodies. And juice plus is a great way to do just that. You know, our bodies are constantly, even when we don't know it, they're constantly carrying out these complex operations to maintain our health. And in normal circumstances, our bodies are fighting off infection, um, blood clots, they're repairing our organs and more using our own natural chemicals and reactions, just like we talked about earlier. I just think it's so fascinating. The world's best pharmacy exists inside each and every one of us. But taking full advantage of our internal pharmacy, it's the most effective way to care for our health. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't require us to make tons of complex decisions, but it does have a few caveats to make it operate well. And this is why you see so many healthcare professionals talking about the importance of eating a whole food diet packed full of nutrient dense plants. And this is why I chose to partner with the Juice Plus company. My goal is to help educate each of us, you know, all of us to become as heart healthy as possible. As a pharmacist, this is why I've been proud to share Juice Plus for over six years with my family and friends. So I wanna be sure to touch on the Omega Blend for a moment. Omega oils are particularly good for the arteries because they help reduce inflammation, reduce high blood pressure, reduce triglycerides, raise HDL, the good cholesterol, and then make our blood less sticky so it's less likely to clot. 
over the years, so much research has been done on omegas and their role in our bodies, including our heart health. And if you're like me, you may have tried fish oil in the past, and maybe you're also like me and you desired something that avoids contaminants like mercury and the killing of a lot of fish um, in the process to obtain just a small amount of oil. I love that Juice Plus has an amazing blend of omega oils, all plant-based. So it's a blend of three, five, six, seven, and nine, and they've bypassed the middle fish and went straight to the source, which is a blend of five omegas. Um, and it includes algae, berries, and seeds. And you know, the capsule technology with this omega just excites me so much. It truly is cutting edge. And the way the technology is used, it protects the oil integrity on the inside to make sure it remains stable, something that's so important. Mm -hmm. So jumping back to the research on Juice Plus, I wanna be sure to note that we're talking about very high quality clinical research. Juice Plus has been clinically researched on humans in universities and research centers around the world. And now 41 individual studies conducted by researchers at leading institutions and published in peer reviewed scientific journals. And you can see um, a few of these, these institutions where Juice Plus has been studied. And here's some of the research results. Just look at the one on the top left here. Uh, I wanna draw your attention to that one. It's proven to contribute to cardiovascular wellness. And I love what my friend, Dr. Rick Dubois said. He said, there's nothing available any place in the world with or without a prescription that has been clinically proven to do what Juice Plus has been proven to do. And that is the truth. So back to heart health, uh, can, you can see here um, all of the different studies, uh, the combined results from multiple studies that show that Juice Plus produces positive effects on several measures of our vascular health. And like I said, you can see all the different publications here um, that are listed on heart health alone. And you can look deeper into these if, if you'd like to. And I need to pause on the research for a minute to really shine a spotlight on the berry blend, one of my favorites. Uh, the berry blend completes what we call the trio, um, the three blend, and it helps to give us that rainbow of nutrition with Juice Plus. Remember earlier when I said we'd come back to the antioxidants and how they work in our bodies to protect us against that oxidative stress that we were talking about and the damage and the nitric oxide and all of that? Well, look closer at this Juice Plus berry blend. Just look at the ingredients here uh, across the bottom. We're talking foods like raspberry, bilberry, blueberry, cranberry, pomegranate, concord grapes, black currant, blackberry, elderberry, and more. The reason these foods are so protective and cardio protective at that is because of these flavonoids the class of polyphenols found in them. And they've been found to have that inverse relationship with cardiovascular disease. In other words, like we said earlier from that huge meta-analysis, the more flavonoids you have in your diet, the lower your risk for cardiovascular disease. And in many of these, the peel of, of the food is what you know really contains a lot of the flavonoids. And we get many of them in our juice plus. I love that. It's not left out. So these are things like anthocyanins, which give them their deep, beautiful colors, and they're proven to help with that free radical damage that we discussed and the reduction in heart disease. They're powerful in anti-inflammatory action. These compounds and these flavonoids have been proven to do the things that we need them to do, like reduce the platelet stickiness, decrease blood pressure, they're anti-inflammatory, and they help prevent the, oxid, uh, the oxidation of that LDL, the bad cholesterol, and then they help increase the production of that nitric oxide that we talked about earlier. So cool to think that fruits and vegetables do all of this stuff that we need them to do. All right, so back to the research. I wanna take a look at my favorite study from the Journal of the American, Cardi uh, American College of Cardiology um, back from May, 2003. And there were three groups studied uh, in this study. There was the placebo group, the fruit and vegetable group, and then third, the fruit, vegetable, and berry group. And they were all given a high fat meal. And four hours later after the, after the high fat meal, uh, 
the expected blood vessel constriction occurred uh, that was evidenced by measuring the brachial artery. So again, after the high fat meal, you know, they saw that uh, blood vessel constriction in the arteries, but what they found after 28 days in each of the groups uh, was the adverse effects of the high fat meal were reduced compared to placebo in the fruit and vegetable group by 62%. And look at this, when the berry blend was added and they took all three blends, the fruit, vegetable, and berry, the restriction of blood flow was virtually eliminated. And we know this is, this most likely has to do with that nitric oxide production that we talked about in the beginning, um, the potent vasodilator. So how amazing the fruit and vegetable alone gave about a 62% reduction in vasoconstriction, but adding the berry blend and having all three fruit, vegetable, and berry took it to about a 98% reduction. And I don't know if that excites you, but it definitely excites me. So I just have to add this in because remember what we talked about in the beginning with some of our children now developing fatty streaks in their arteries, heart health needs to be a focus at all ages. It's never too early to start. And I love that the Juice Plus company has a program called Healthy Starts for Families where children can receive their Juice Plus for free with an, a paying adult sponsor. Just look at the results here. I know as a mom, I get so excited to see that 50 per, 56% were taking fewer over-the-counter and or prescription drugs, 66% visiting the doctor less, and so much more. So I'm going to leave you with one final thought uh, tonight from Dr. Esselstyn again. He said something I loved about where we are and what we can do as we focus on our health. He said, what I think could be an absolute seismic revolution and this seismic revolution in health that is before us is never going to come about with another pill or another drug. The seismic revolution is never going to come about through another procedure or an operation. But the seismic revolution will come about when we in the profession have the will, the grit, and the determination to share with the public what is the lifestyle, and most specifically, what is the nutritional literacy that will empower them as the locus of control to absolutely annihilate chronic illness? So I hope this has inspired you to take control of your health and to look a little closer at what you and your entire family can be doing to support your heart health. And if you have any questions about anything you heard tonight, just get with the person who invited you to watch. Thank you all for joining and have a great night.